All right, so I'm finishing up on some siding here. Instead of Tyvek, they use tar paper. Honestly, it's some more expensive practice, but I have no corals with it. Not only is it waterproof, but it increases the R value of the house. So it means more insulation. Um, much. This is how I built this porch. Um, there's a lot of stuff on it now. As you can see. And I built the roof too. And I built the stairs. Railing has to be equal or greater than the last step by code. And uh, still gonna wrap some flashing around the roof and whatnot. But it's a mess, but a work in progress. So I'm gonna hold siding back up over here. Here's the new hot. The old Busta, new hot. Old Busta, new hot. Old Busta, no. Old dirty cliche. Now, <laughs> I'll show you pretty much. This is, this is all just to hang inside, and it's pretty easy to hang siding. Um, I'm, I don't purposely smoke in my videos, in case you're wondering. Um, I have a bad habit of smoking constantly, like two or three packs a day. Uh, I'm going to die. So, I'm trying to shed some information to y'all and uh see where this goes so i'll show you how to cut some siding i'm currently you can use uh tin snips what i got on me right now was a pair of duralast gasket cutters and uh, they work just as good as tin snips when they open their self back up get them at autozone for i think 20 bucks uh, i cut out a head gasket for a lawnmower i didn't make a video of that i was a little busy but um screw it so here, without further ado here's how you hang siding all right, so flip the count. Now there's one little spot that I'm not gonna worry about because we're under a roof. So what I do is I eyeball. My eyeballs are so accurate that you check my siding with a level. Give me that very quick. You check my siding with a level, the bubble is right in the middle. And that's just by eyeballing it, folks. I, I'm not lying. Um, I'm not that good, but I am that good. So what I mean to say is I lucked out, so I was lucky. But these windows here, some people are like, no, you gotta put J-channel in them. Uh, I don't usually, once in a while I will if I've got extra J-channel laying around. But if I see windows like this, they're probably not gonna get J-channel in them. I mean, it's basically a J here. See how far in the window goes. I didn't put this window in because I would have used screws, but it's fine. I might put a couple more screws in the top here when we're missing a few. But anyway, um, this comes back past the siding. You always want your siding to be able to slip a little. Uh, must have sunk one of them a little too deep, but it's no big deal under a porch. Mainly where you're getting direct sunlight is what you want. But anyway, now that we see it's level, I'm still recording good. But now that you can see it's level, here's how I hang them. Um, piece. Now, some people don't like this, but it's the easiest way I've found to do it. Here I am a little slow at this compared to some professionals, but I mean, I get it up. That's all I care about. And I just cut right here. I eyeball it. They always fall into place. I've never found an inspection. Now, to get that to clip in, I grab here, push like that, and the whole thing. And then, when it slides, you're good. Can you see that slide on the video? Mm -hmm. All right, so now I grab a couple nails. Just start with a few here. And start putting them in. You don't want to take them all the way home. You want it to still be able to slide when you're done. So once you center your siding, you're going to want to put the nails right in the middle. Because when it gets hot, it'll expand. And when it gets cold, it'll contract or constrict or whatever word you want to use. Once I go up higher than eight feet, I'll put it down about every six inches. Uh, typically put one about every foot or so. Some, some people say I over nail my shank. Honestly, I, I don't want to do it again. Some people are like, oh, you gotta put a nail in every one. Well, you overachievers are weird. So, there. That's a lot of nails, if you ask me. Um, 
I've hung pal houses and done them, done them down like the 18 inches. I've seen them done every 24 inches. Uh, to me, it don't matter. What I care about is a finished product that I can sleep tight about knowing the wind ain't gonna take them off. Wrestling match, lost. And if you just look at your square from here to here and here to here, as you're cutting this point to this point, just cut your little line in, this point to this point, this point to this point, and keep it the same on each side, and then find your forward point of contact and make a perfect Y in the middle, your cut will be straight every time. You don't have to line it, you don't have to sole it, you don't have to go crazy. If you disagree, then I don't care, because this is how I hang side. Just enough for it to slide along. That one could actually use a little more taken on. I like it to slide at least a quarter inch from six feet. Um, just as, as a rough estimate. Sometimes you mess a piece up like that. Yeah, I cut that way too big. Um, I've had siding in hotter regions in direct sunlight. And if it's not white, it'll expand really far. Or no pun intended when white things not expanding farther than darker things. Assuming. Okay, so there's that. Got me a handful of nails. And to, to nail faster, a lot of people are like, wow, you nail a lot faster than I do. Uh, all I do is, first you center that. Put the nail in the center of the lines here. As you're hammering with this, you'll be twiddling this finger around, trying to get your next nail ready. See? And it takes almost a half a dexterous uh, freak like myself to nail these in. Like, what do you expect? I'm all dirty cliche. Take me to hang two pieces? Seven minutes. Seven minutes, okay. So, if you do a roofing square, a square is 100 square feet, 10 by 10. Uh, let's see, one, two, double dutch, three, four. I hung 16 times. So, about almost 14 square feet, about 12 to 14 square feet if that's somewhere what 16 times 7 is. If not, go ahead and whip your calculator out and pretend like you're some math guru. I don't care. But, I mean, that's about it. That's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. And I'll double check it with a level. I, I, I'll check it with a level every other one. Some people don't. Um, if you're using tar paper, you can eyeball it. And what you'll do is, if you see one side's lower, you don't want to sag that at all. Keep it full stretch. And you'll take the other side and you'll push it up quarter inch at a time, an eighth of an inch at a time, and that'll rack up, because not only is that side, you know, still flush, this is an eighth of an inch higher, well, on the next one, you got a quarter inch, and you can relax that side a little bit, but not too much. Uh, if you get a quarter inch, it'll rack up real quick. I can show you the same trick with decking boards. Uh, building is an illusion. That's why, you know, things are set up the way they are. You know, plywood and drywall are four by eight sheets. If you're staring at the sheet by yourself, it looks perfect. Uh, if somebody did some sloppy mud, you won't tell. When I mud, they're not going to see the joints. It's just, it doesn't happen. I'll even skin coat the whole wall if I have to. Um, it's not rocket science. It's just building. And uh, as you see, I mean, we got a nice tight siding here. See? So that'll, that'll definitely take the wind. And I might have taken that nail home a little too far, but that's about right. Some people like to leave them a good gap to where the siding's just barely moving around, but I try to keep them in the middle that way when it expands and contracts, you're in good shape. Even this one, it's got a little bit of room to move, but you don't need that much wiggle. About a quarter inch for every six feet or so, and I've, I've never had a problem with them. It's fun though, if you want to watch expand and contract, uh, wait till like July, around lunchtime, and just direct heat on your siding and spray it with cold water and you'll hear it go it'll all just like I'll make that sound again it'll go yeah just like that so that's a really fun thing to do is watch your uh, watch your siding contract it's almost as fun as watching paint dry paying taxes or minding your own business yeah 
but you know just really fun things there now um i hope you liked the video uh please subscribe if you have any suggestions uh put them down in the comments box i'd love to hear what you have to say what you uh want to see me build next uh just let me know what video you want to do next one's probably going to be soffit under here we'll see um depends on what the customer wants but yeah um hope you liked the video uh you guys can eat me alive down in the comments because a lot of people are like that's not how you do it you're doing it right or do you're doing it wrong you're not doing it right dude, dude i've been doing this a while um i don't care and as long as it passes inspection when they come to look at it and it never falls off the building and it still looks good in 20 years why do you care like really you're gonna take it that far so you know there's there's tolerances to everything you do and that's the thing a lot of people they can't get their mind through they're like oh studs are 16 inches on center and then i'll say no pine studs are 16 inches on center if you're using oak or you're using you know two by eight instead of a two by six you can go to 24 depending on how tall the wall is i mean if it's only an eight foot wall you can definitely span a pine two by six 24 on center um in most regions it depends on you know what's required and grain count matters a lot too um engineers realize people are using pine with less grains in it like i used here and a lot of people will be like oh man you're using pine for you know for rafters uh, yeah yeah i am and i still stick build rafters i've got roofs that hold way more than 30 psi um and up north a lot of guys will be like oh that's it you know i've got i said way more than 30 uh, that's what's required in most regions so i mean really how far do you want to take this i didn't say hey you know guy does this it's like i was like no hey you know handyman contractor old dirty cliche just hanging some siding minding his own business so if y'all got a problem with how i do it like you did with my other video then you know just let me know because maybe i'll do it your way next time i'm just saying um yeah i'm i'm not saying this is the perfect or the proper or the best way to do it this is how i do it so if you got a better way go ahead i've been in trade for about 10 years as a licensed contractor now so I believe I'm doing things right. Um, I mean, there's always little tricks to the trade, even with something as simple as painting. Um, I got showed up by a 45 year, uh, 45 year painter, the man, 60 years old. He'd been painting since he was 15 professionally since he was 10. He'd been painting for money, but he got involved with a good group of guys and he really showed me how things were done. I was like, wow. He's like, why didn't you bring any patch? I'm like patch. What do you mean like drywall mud he's like no paint patch i was like what do you mean he's like like number five or started spitting numbers out i'm like huh what are you talking about he's like it's paint primer it's it's primer mud combo to fill in like if there's a scratch in your paint and man his walls look like they were painted by you know a professional painter and they were so um yeah it's really impressive you know how people can do stuff so fast when that's all they do so I'm sure a professional siding guy will be like, oh, you're doing it wrong. But, uh, again, I don't care. Um, this is what you get. I mean, this it's going to hold up better than the siding that blew off in the first place. So, yeah. I'm pretty confident in my ability to hang siding. I mean, if you, if you guys don't like it, please let me know in the comments. I had that on a video of uh, a Chevy Impala. I did a motor mount, and I got... I don't know, maybe 50,000 views on that one or so. And people were literally like, oh, really? You're just going to jack that engine up by the oil pan? For one, I didn't do it by that. To make you even more mad, I jacked it up by the freaking AC uh, bracket. And I was only jacking the engine up a little bit. And I put a, I believe I put a board under there. I might have done it on the oil pan with a 2x4 on it. I can't remember now. It's been a few years. But long story short uh, people were like oh that's that's not how the factory repair manual says to do it well guess what after i did that motor mount i put another sixty-five thousand miles on that car and it ran fine so it worked i don't care and i didn't leak any oil it's not like i crushed the seal when i jacked it up on the oil pan or anything you know i didn't say hey awesome ace at master mechanic uh you know Big dick, Billy, badass, gunslinging, son of a bitch, puts motor mount on. Uh, there went uh, my ability to monetize this, but I don't care. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just saying, like, 
everybody has their own way of doing things. Um, I've gone way too long into talking and about how other people are going to eat me up. Um, who knows? Somebody might be like, hey, man, looks like looks like normal siding to me. Um, but I, I think it's funny if you're going to sit there and complain about something as, as funny as an automotive repair or something as, you know, little as siding or even drywall or painting or carpet. Uh, I seen him. Uh, I seen a video where a guy was doing a hardwood floor and this dude's just eating him alive. He's like, oh, you're not supposed to sand like that. I'm like, it's his floor. He's just saying, hey, look, I'm sanding my floor. And it came out and looked fine. I mean, maybe it won't in five years. It looked good when the video ended. So I'm sure that's all he cared about. And it's his house. So it is what it is. Uh, the biggest thing I'm thinking is um, people got nothing better to do than complain about how you're doing stuff on your own house. And uh, this isn't even like uh, a big deal. This is a family member's house. So um, it's going to hold up fine. Like, I, it, my, my work always holds up great. So I don't see where the problem is. But um, it was a quick, rough job that had to pass zero inspections. Um, we're in the middle of nowhere in a cabin. So, you know, come at me, bro. I really don't care. Anyway, um, it's your boy, old dirty cliche, like and subscribe, <laughs> I'm out.